All right, welcome to the third part. In the previous two parts, we went over how we can make uh, this uh, part, and then we went over to how to make the second one. Now, we're gonna try to tackle on something like this. So, this is not very complicated, though if you haven't done it before, it can pose a challenge. So, just like we went in the first part, if you haven't watched that one, I would recommend you start there. We're just gonna trace out one line that's going to basically tell us exactly what kind of a shape we wanna have for our portion here. So bear with me. I'm gonna click it here. I click here. I don't have to be overly exact on where I'm placing these lines because I'm basically going to change it as soon as I'm done with it. So something like this and close it at the middle. So now again I'm gonna go over and slap on a lathe modifier. Just like with the previous parts we're gonna click on the min or the minimum and now in the line uh, select vertex selection, control A to select all the vertices, right click, Bezier corner. Now I have much better control over how I want my line to look like. There we go. Now let's try and just follow the line and see how it's going to go. There we go very closely still something like this if you spend just a bit more time trying to trace the outlines i'm sure you're going to get a much closer result but for this video i just want to go over and get an estimate or roughly similar shape to what i'm seeing so i don't care way too much about how it's gonna look like so something like here just get this closer to follow thing is I want to get a smoother transition because otherwise we're gonna get there we go no jagging there all right this is okay both of these can go with the fillet or the chamfer so i'm going to try with a fillet to get a wider effect like this another one here and i'm going to leave this for now like this just maybe fillet both of these so i get a rounder edge and another one over here so you get basically getting the idea i'm just trying to achieve a closer result like this so now when I drop on dropping the lathe modifier, I get something like this. So for now, I'm just gonna put it on the side. All right. See, this is why I didn't wanna put an actual vertex in here. So let's see if I can go ahead and make this smooth. Oh no. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna try and delete and maybe get this by just moving those two. There we go, something like this. Should work. Yep, now we no longer have that issue in the middle. All right, so what we need to do here is first thing is we need to know how many of these ridges we have here. So I'm not sure as to how many of them are there, but I'm gonna try 32 and see how that looks. Mm, 24. All right, let's go with 24. I'm not sure if it's 24, but just for sakes of this video, let's go with 24 and see how this thing is going to work. Now, if we drop in a turbo smooth, we're gonna get something like this, which is fairly close to this but we need 
this in bit of information here. So these ridges. So how are we going to uh, retain those ridges or how are we going to make those ridges? So for now, I'm going to delete the Turbo Smooth and on top of the Late modifier, I'm going to drop in an Edit Poly. All right. So this is what I want to do. I want to select one of these or before I do anything else, I'm going to go over to Hierarchy, Effect Pivot and Center to Object. So I want to have my pivot in the center. That's very important for this uh, way of working. So and again, go over here, uh, select one of the edges and ring it or just Alt R. So you can just either click on one of the edges and click ring. This is going to select all the ring here. So what I want to do here is control click on the polygon. So hold down control and click on polygon. This is going to select and keep all of the polygons along that line. So the first thing I want to do before I do this is I can see that the color of my selection is a bit vague. That means the late normals are a bit off. So I have to click on that flip normals. Go back to edit poly. Now everything is fine. So what I want to do here is I want to invert my selection so I can press control I and delete. So basically what I did here is I deleted everything except this little stripe of geometry. Now, the reason for doing this is basically because I want to select like all of the polygons along this line down to about here. And now I want to well, there you go, deselect. I want to go ahead and bevel this. So bevel one centimeter, maybe zero point minus one. Let's see. Yeah, this is gonna work with minus one. So now what gives? We had a nice shape, but now we just have one stripe. Well, the uh, Max has a very, very good tool that can allow us from one strip to make a 360 model. And in order to get to that tool, we have to go over here where it says tools and click on array. So if this is the first time you are accessing array, the way it works is basically it has three options or three uh, ways that it can work. It can move things, it can rotate them, and it can scale them. On this side, it's basically you're telling it to go in increments, while in this side, it's getting in totals. So, in my case, I want to take this stripe and basically make more copies around it, or around the pivot point or the center. So in this case, I'm going to click on this arrow over here where it says rotate. And on the Y axis, at least I think it's going to be Y, but we're going to see. I'm just going to click 360. So that means we're going to have 360 uh, degrees turn. So now I'm going to go do down over here in array elements or array dimensions. And in the count, let's, let's go with 10 for now and click on preview. So I can see I'm getting a really wacky result. So that means that this is not the correct uh, axis. So I'm gonna bring it back to zero. Let's try Z 360. And of course, I'm starting to get something. Now, if the preview has been clicked, you're gonna see right away an interactive end result. So you can just try and increase the count over here. And as you're increasing it, you're going to see that it's getting closer and closer until it finally gets to 24. All right, 23, 24. Let's get it, see if it's closed up. Yes, it is. So 24 on a 360Z, click OK. Oh, one other thing. Before you click OK, 
uh, all on the left side. You can see that you can either make it a copy or an instance. If you make it an instance, it's going to be a problem when you want to get all of these together in the same element. So make sure it's a copy. Click OK. And now we simply go ahead and attach all of these together. So I can just click, 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 click. All right, let's go ahead, just a few more. I could have just clicked on the this little list here and select from the list, but we just went and did it manually anyways. So this is what we have to do now. All of these are separate, even though separate objects, even though they're in the same polygon group. So what I want to do is select vertex, Control A, so I select all of the vertices in this model, and just control, uh, click on the weld options, with a very very small number here. I can choose something like this, and we can see that from twenty seven thousand vert vertices, we drop to fourteen thousand. That means it's going to get all of those. Uh, vertices that are on top of each other to weld together. So there we go. Now, if we go ahead and put a turbo smooth on it, we end up with effect an effect like this. And if we take a look at how it looks here, we can see that it's a very very close match to this portion. Now. If I want to add a few more details, like uh, these ridges here, I can simply just use some basic modeling techniques. So just hold here, since I have two pieces in there. So connect with two segments. And now extrude. Let's go in one centimeter and get this to, let's say, another one. Yeah, this should work. All right. Jump through the inner part. So we get some sharpness. Ring or just let's let's use the swift loop. Dropping one over there, one over there and there and there. This should help with the final form. And there we go. All right, so with this, we get this lower portion. And now we have to just add the top portion, but instead of making it again, like we did it with this part, I can go ahead and I've placed it in a modular uh, layer. On the side, I can just shift click and drag it into position, lower it down. With the edit poly, I can simply get it to the right position. And let's see. All right. Before we go over the edit poly, let's align it with the middle here, center, center. And again, for this. I want to go ahead, delete this vertex in here. So in the middle, it's not in the way. All right, so select, okay. So I guess I'm gonna have to select it like this and delete. All right. Now with this, I can simply shift with the border selected, I can either move it upwards like this, or I can try and match this portion as well. So hold on, shift, and with the scale, and then shift, move upwards like this. Since we added and we want to retain this in bit of information to keep it from the turbo smooth, we just add in a few more extra edges 
one here and here and here and here and with this there we go we get, we get it to look something like that all right front all right so with this i'm going to give it the gray material as well select both of them make them black and there it is so with this we finish up this portion here so let's continue and see how we can make the rest of these and learn how to add in some extra shapes and to see how we can tackle those problems.